a complete exercise part two. So we continue posting this journal and we reach in the previous part uh, transaction six. So we shall treat seven, eight, nine, and ten. In fact, after nine, we shall also pass two transactions for amortization and provision. Transaction six led us to this IS, income statement, sales of 90, purchases of 30, no closing stocks, gross margin of 60. And since we have no uh, recorded charges yet after the gross margin, PNL 60. And the BS, fixed set 50, no more stock, a Steve AOU, a client owing us money, and cash 70 on the asset side. Liabilities capitals 100, PNL 60, and we owe nothing to, uh, to Mary, our supplier of goods. Now we purchase more goods from Mary. 14,000 euros worth of goods. We pay them uh, 70 euros a piece for 200 items. That's not the same price as before, but that's normal. Such a transaction has no impact on the IS. IS, no change. And the BS here uh, will change. On the asset side, we shall have fixed sets 50. Stock, well, just what we purchased, 14,000. Uh, Steve, that is our debtors, 40. And we still have cash, 70. All this is on the uh, debit column. And on the liability side, we still have the uh, capital 100. We have the same PNL as before, 60 PNL. And we owe Mary again 14,000. Mary, she's a supplier. So here the total is 174, and here the total is 64. Uh, that's 174. Everything is okay. We purchase more goods on credit from Mary, 200 items more, and this time at another price again. IS, no change. And the BS, well, assets, fixed assets, the equipment we bought, that's on the debit side, 50. The stock now is what we just bought altogether, 14 and 13, that's 27. Steve owes us, or client owes us, let's call it client, owes us 40. And we haven't touched our cash reserve, 70. A liability side, capital, that's on the credit side here, uh, capital 100. PNL, it doesn't change, and that's on the credit side again. And Mary, now we owe her 27,000. She's a supplier. Now comes the interesting, an interesting transaction, sale, sale again of 300 items, cash, and each of them worth 180 euros. That's a sale of 54,000 euros. And here, to compute the income statement, we have to decide which stock valuation method to use, because we have in stock 400 items, some of them worth 70, some of them worth 65 per item, and we sell 300. So which one do we take? Let's decide we use the LIFO method, that is we sell 300 items, the cogs of which are 200 items, the, the most recent ones are all gone, and we take also 100 items at 70. So that's altogether a sale of, uh, that is a COGS, sorry, of 20,000 euros. And the remaining stock, of course, is 7,000 euros. So let's compute the income statement from the beginning until after transaction 9. Income statement. Let's do it formally this time. Income statement with this shape. debit, credit. So sales. Now we have sold altogether 50 at first, then 40, and now we just sold for uh, 54. That's altogether 144. Opening stocks, nothing. Purchases, 
Well, we purchased 30 at first and then 27. 30 plus 27, that's 57. Closing stocks. Well, here is the closing stock using the LIFO method, that's 7. And we reach a gross margin of 94. And since we haven't recorded any other charge yet, the net result is also 94. Now we compute the balance sheet after this transaction line. And there again, let's be a bit more formal than we've been before. Asset side, liability side. We have debit, credit, liability, debit, credit. Let's make it nice looking like that. So on the asset side, we have the fixed assets. That's 50,000. We have uh, closing stocks, seven. We have an IOU from a client, 40. And we have cash, which is what we had before. Uh, seven, we had before 70, and we had the cash from the recent sale, 54, that's 124,000 euros of cash. And on the liability side, we have the capital, which doesn't change. We have the PNL that we just saw of 94. And we have what we owe to suppliers, that is to Mary, and that's 27. Let's check the, the sums. Here, 57 plus 40, 97, plus 124, that's 221. And here we have 100 plus 94 plus 27, that's 221. And now let's suppose that before transaction 10, which is paying uh, salaries, we also record amortization of 10,000 euros of machinery. And we also pass a provision of 20,000 euros on Steve uh, Aoyu. We believe somehow that this is shaky. So we shall amortize this 10,000 euros and we shall pass a provision on that. Well, here is the result. Uh, I just took a picture of a board because I'm also a teacher in real schools. The income statement, sales 144, opening stocks nothing, purchases we saw 57, closing stocks 7, gross margin 94, the salary that's for transaction 10, that's later. Well, depreciation, that's another name for amortization, IS 10, provision IS 20. So we have a bottom line now that is no longer 94, but 64. And on the balance sheet, that's the income statement. And on the balance sheet, asset side equipment 50,000, minus somehow, if you like, depreciation 10, that's debit and that's credit, debit and credit. Stock seven, using the LIFO method, debtors 40, with a provision on the credit side of 20, that's the mirror image of that, cash 124, so that's a total debit 221, and credit here 30, so a net debit of 191. And on the liability side, capital doesn't change, PNL, that's no longer 94, but only 64, and suppliers, we saw that, 27, so a credit of 191. And transaction 10, which we shall not do, is we pay salaries. So here we shall have a 10. The bottom line will go down to uh, 54. And the cash here will go down to 114. So I'm just at the end of this lesson. This is the end of this complete exercise, the objective of which is to understand precisely the impact of transactions on the IS and BS.